In this example, we want to solve a forced oscillation problem involving an RLC circuit. So a circuit contains a resistor of six ohms, a capacitor of one ninth farad, and an inductor of two henrys. The circuit is closed at time t equals zero with an AC source that supplies a voltage of two cosine five t volts at 50 seconds. Determine a function for the charge of the capacitor at any point in time. So we want to use our standard form for an RLC circuit equation here. That this equation should be the inductance times the second derivative of charge plus the resistance times the first derivative, plus one over capacitance times the charge equals our applied voltage V of T. In this case, Q is the charge on the capacitor, so the function Q is the answer we're looking for here. So what do we know? We know that the inductance is two Henry's, so two Q double prime. The resistor is six ohms plus six Q prime. The capacitance is one ninth, so this is nine Q equals our applied voltage, two cosine of five T. If it's a little bit easier, I'm gonna divide through by a two to solve out for Q. So Q double prime plus three Q prime plus nine halves Q equals cosine of five T. And what are the initial conditions? Well, we know the circuit is closed at T equals zero. So at that starting point, there is no voltage on the capacitor and there's no current through the circuit. So it means that our initial conditions are that Q of zero is zero and Q prime of zero is also zero. So now we can try to solve this problem. So first we solve the homogeneous part, which has characteristic equation, R squared plus three R plus nine halves equals zero. We can work this out using the equilibrium formula. Look at that R should be negative three plus or minus the square root of three squared is nine, minus four times A times C over two. This here, four times nine halves will give me an 18. Nine minus 18 is negative nine. So I will see roots of negative three plus or minus square root of negative nine over two, or negative three halves plus or minus three halves i, because that root negative nine becomes a three i. Which means that the general solution to the homogeneous part is y c of t, is C1 e to the minus 3 halves t cosine of 3 halves t plus C2 e to the minus 3 halves t sine of 3 halves t. Now before we can work with the initial conditions, we have to find the non-homogeneous solution first. So for the non-homogeneous part, our right hand side was 2 cosine of 5t. So our guess should be a cosine 5t plus b sine of 5t. And to do this, we could use either form of the equation. So what I am going to do is I am gonna work with the version after I've divided by two. So I'm not gonna have a two cosine 5t, I'm gonna have just a cosine 5t on the right. But now I have my equation here, q double prime plus three q prime plus nine halves q. So that means if I take derivatives of this, I can then plug that into my equation and then collect like terms, simplify this out. We'll end up with a cosine of 5t multiplied by negative 25a plus 15b plus 9 halves a and a sine of 5t multiplied by a negative 25b, a minus 15a and a plus 9 halves b. And I want this to match cosine of 5t, so I want this to be one and this to be zero. I mean, I get the system of equations. This 25 is 50 over two. This is negative 41 over two a plus 15 b equals one and negative 15 a minus 41 over two b equals zero, which we can start by multiplying both equations by two to make it look a little nicer. And then I'm going to, to cancel this out, multiply the first equation by 41, the second by 30, and then add them because that will get rid of the B terms in the middle. I'll end up with an 84 on the right. On the left, I'll end up with a negative 41 squared minus 30 squared times A. My value of a here will be 84 over negative 41 squared plus 30 squared or 84 over 2581. 
the negative sign. And the second equation tells us that 41B equals negative 30A, so that B should be negative 30 over 41 times 84 over 2581, which is the negative sign in front of it for the A term, which is a positive 60 over 2581. So therefore our particular solution, YP, is going to be negative 84 over 2581 cosine of 5t plus 60 over 2581 sine of 5t. Giving that our full general solution is our homogeneous part, c1 e to the minus 3 halves t cosine of 3 halves t plus c2 e to the minus 3 halves t sine of 3 halves t. And then our non-homogeneous part, and 84 over 2581 cosine of 5t plus a 60 over 2581 sine of 5t. Now that we're at this point, this is our function q of t. I'll write the right letter here. We want to work with the initial conditions, which tell us that q of 0 and q prime of 0 were both 0. So for q, we can use this. For q prime, we need to take the first derivative. So the first derivative here will be product rule on the homogeneous part. That's for the c1 term. For the c2 term, and then for the non homogeneous part, I just multiply everything by 5, swapping the trig functions as appropriate. And I realize now I've made an algebraic error further up, so we'll go back and correct that. This is not 84, this is 82, which means this is 82, this is 82, this is 82, and that's still 60. So this gets replaced by an 82, this gets replaced by an 82, and now we're back here with this 410 as expected over 2581 with a positive sign and a sine of 5t, and then plus 300 for 2581, cosine of 5t. Now we can plug in zero and see what we get. So for q of t, q of t being, with t being zero, I get that zero should equal, the cosine term sticks around, so I get a c1, the sine term goes away, the cosine sticks around, minus 82 over 2581, and the other sign term goes away, this tells me that c1 must be 82 over 2581. For q prime, I get that zero should equal, the first cosine term survives, negative three half c1, the sine terms go away, sine term goes away, so gone and gone. This cosine survives, plus three half c2, and then the cosine term in the non homogeneous part survives, so the 300 over 2581. I know what C1 is already. So 3 half C2 should equal 3 half C1 minus 300 over 2581. 3 half C1 will be 82 is 41 times 3 is a 123. 123 minus 300 over 2581 gives me a negative 177 divided by 2581. Dividing that by three and then multiplying by two tells me that C2 must be negative 118 over 2581. So thus our full solution to the initial value problem and therefore our function Q for the charge at any time is Q of T equals C1, 82 over 2581 e to the minus 3 halves t cosine of 3 halves t minus 118 over 2581 e to the minus 3 halves t sine of 3 halves t and then plus my non homogeneous solution which is the same as it was before. So that gives me the function that describes the charge of the capacitor at any time t coming from solving this non-homogeneous second order consequence coefficient equation that we know describes how this RLC circuit behaves. It involves many of our same techniques from non-homogeneous equations, as well as interpreting this correctly in terms of these actual circuits to see what's going on for this setup.